Hello, my name is Jordan Buckingham. I'm on the video production team at MosquitoCurtains.com. And in this session of planning your project, we're going to talk about a freestanding rectangle with a tracking attachment. Before we get started, I want to talk about when it's good to call in your order. Many people are going to have these rectangular panels, and whenever you do, you can simply order yourself online. But if you have more complex examples like these slopes and notches, you're going to want to give us a call so that we can help you plan your project. This is a good example of that. You can see this gabled roof. We've got sloped panels up there at the top. This order would have to be called in. But with that being said, going through this tutorial will still benefit you because it'll give you an idea of how we go through the planning process. We've got a few goals for the project. Number one, we want to keep bugs out. Secondly, we want it to look nice. And finally, we want it to be easy to use. At this point, you've probably seen a bunch of videos. You're well aware of our surface and panel connections. We've got marine snaps that allow you to snap to a wall or a column magnetic doorways that allow panels to seal to each other with a magnetic connection, and then stucco strips which are basically a combination of the first two connection types. There are three steps to ordering your curtains. Step one, panels. Step two, your tracking. And step three, the attachments you need to put it all together. So let's jump into step one, panels. We're gonna answer a couple of questions here. Number one, how many panels do I need? And secondly, what are the final dimensions of each panel? The first thing that we need to talk about is the path and panel configuration. There are two basic types, an outside hang and an inside hang. Outside hang basically means you're going to go on the outside of your columns, and an inside hang means you're going to go on the inside of your columns of your structure. Most of the time in this application, we're going to be using an outside hang. There are two basic types of corner columns, regular and irregular. The main difference in a regular column and an irregular column is a regular column has some sort of a straight edge that you can snap to, creating a seal with your curtain. So you can actually directly snap to a regular column. An irregular column, you can't do that. Sometimes it's cylindrical, it's an ornate column, or maybe a fluted or a spindle column that doesn't give you a straight edge to be able to snap and seal your panel directly to the column. So let's talk about handling corners with regular columns. In this case, you want to consider an outside hang and ending your panels at corner columns because like I said, with a regular column, you can snap your panel directly to that corner column and that creates a really clean look whenever you finish putting up your curtains. Handling corners for irregular columns is a bit different. In this case, you're going to want to take an inside hang so that you can straddle the irregular corner column because like I said, you can't snap to an irregular column. So we have two basic methods for handling corners. Number one is the right angle method. And secondly, we have curved track. You can draw to a right angle, but you can't draw past the right angle. If you want to draw past a corner, you're going to have to use a piece of curved track. We recommend that you use the right angle method whenever possible because it does two things. Number one, it provides the cleanest look. And secondly, it saves you a little bit of money because you don't have to purchase this curved track. All right, so let's look at some panel configurations. What I want to start with is a five panel outside hang configuration. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to break this up into a series of panels. What I've got here is a top view of my project. And what you'll see is that on each of my corners, I've got regular corner columns. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be snapping each of my panels to these regular corner columns. Now in the front here, I've added a magnetic connection. The cool thing about a magnetic connection is that allows me to actually draw my panels open without unsnapping anything because I can just jerk and pull this magnetic connection and I'll be able to pull this panel off to this side and I'll be able to pull this panel off to that side. But because all these others are just snapped at the corners and they don't have a magnetic connection, I'll still be able to draw my panel, but to do that, I'm going to have to unsnap one of these edges to be able to do it. So magnetic connections are really handy to be able to draw panels without unsnapping. Looking at this as a side view, you can actually see that my P1 would be right here. My second panel would be right here. And then continuing to go around, I've got a third panel, a fourth panel, and a fifth panel. That's why this is going to be a five panel outside hang configuration. All right, so let's move on to a six panel outside hang configuration. Basically what I've done here is it's exactly the same, except I've added an additional magnetic doorway down here. So these panels up here, I can actually draw them to the side without unsnapping anything. And I can do the same down here on the bottom, but here on the sides, I'm still going to have to unsnap to draw my panels. So if you look at this in a side view, 
you can see I've got my panel one here, my panel two here, coming around to a panel that I would have to unsnap, continuing to two more panels, and then moving on to my final panel, which is why this is a six panel outside hang configuration. So now I'm going to move on to the final outside hang configuration, which is an eight panel. Now this one's really neat because I've actually used one of our handy little tools, which is called a stucco strip. So basically a stucco strip gives you the opportunity to establish a magnetic connection at one of those snapping areas. So now if you look at this, I can actually draw all of these panels without unsnapping. I can do this one, that one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And the reason I can do that is because I've added these two stucco strips in. So let's take a look at this as a side view so you can understand that a little better. Basically, the stucco strip we treat as a mini panel, okay? So what I'm going to wind up with is a full panel here, another full panel here, coming to my stucco strip, which is right here on the edge of this third panel, coming down to my next two panels down here, and then finally, I've got my final panel leading back again to another stucco strip. So basically what it comes out to is six full panels that we're going to generate plus two stucco strips that we've added in there. All right, so let's talk about our final configuration, which is a four panel inside hang configuration. Now, the reason I'm talking about an inside hang here is because we have irregular corner columns and I can't actually snap my panels to those irregular corner columns. So in this scenario, I'm going to have to straddle my irregular columns. Other configurations really perform better if you have regular columns because you can snap directly to them. But in this case, we don't have that. So we're going to use this inside hand configuration. So what I've done is I've built four different panels that I'm using the right angle method in the corners on. And then I'm splitting those panels with these magnetic connections. So showing you a side view of how this would look, basically I have one full panel that comes around to here, ending in a magnetic connection and connecting me to panel two. And then that same process goes all the way around. So basically, these panels never actually connect to the surface of the rectangular structure. They just connect to each other with magnetic connections. All right, so the configuration we're going to use for the remainder of the tutorial is this eight panel outside hang configuration. Let's talk about how to measure. First off, you want to measure the width along the path the curtain and the track will take without any adjustments or overlap. Basically, what we want is the exposed opening from the inside of this column to the inside of this column. Secondly, you want to measure the heights at all four corners from the underside of the track mounting surface to the floor. So pretending that this is a piece of track, you can see that this right here would be my track mounting surface. I want to measure from that surface down to the ground whenever I get my heights. And finally, you want to measure where you'd like panel breaks for magnetic doorways relative to some reference corner. Because I'm going to be putting a magnetic doorway right here in the center, my D1 is going to be half of my W1. So let's take a look at my actual measurements. Looking at the sides, I see that all four of my sides come out to 144 inches. Doing the corners, I see that all of my heights are equal at 108 inches. Now one thing we like to tell people is, if one of these corners is a little bit off, but within an inch or two of the others, you can actually take that higher height and apply it to your entire project. So in this case, if I was 109 inches on this corner, I would just use that 109 inches for my entire project. But if you're off more than a couple inches, you'll want to give us a call because we can actually, for a nominal fee, create you a custom sloped curtain for your particular application. And finally, let's look at my panel breaks for magnetic doorways. Because I want to split this in half, half of my 144 inch opening is 72 inches. So that is going to be my width from my reference corner. All right, so let's talk about our unadjusted panel sizes. Basically, what I need to do is make sure that the sum width of all my panels equals the sum width of all of my sides. So in this scenario, I'm going to have six actual panels with two stucco strips. In the beginning, you want to ignore the width of stucco strips altogether. We're going to account for them later. Then you want to determine your unadjusted panel widths and make sure that the sum width of all your sides equals the sum width of all of your panels. So looking at my actual measurements, I've got 144 inch sides here and I've already decided that 
in the sections where I'm going to break with a magnetic doorway in the center, I'm just going to split those in half. So basically, this 144 inch side becomes two panels of 72 inches. This 144 inch side does the same. And then these I'm going to treat as if there's just one panel there without the stucco strip. So I'm going to have a 144 inch panel on that side. So if I do all the math to add up all of these panels, one, two, three, four, five, six, I just need to make sure that they equal the width of all of my sides. And that is the case. My 576 inches does indeed equal 576 inches and I'm good to go. All right, so let's move on to our final panel adjustments. You can see that I've got these laid out left to right on a side view. This is the eight panel configuration that we were talking about with six actual panels and two stucco strips. Now, first off, let's talk about the height adjustments. My height is a constant 108 inches for my project. That's what all four of my corners turned out to be. And there are no actual height adjustments required for tracking attachments. So I'm just gonna get to use 108 inches for all of my panels on the height. But there are a handful of width adjustments required, assuming that you measure just the exposure without any overlap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to do the final panel adjustments on panel one, panel two, and panel three. And panel four, five, and six are actually just duplicates of those panels. So getting started with panel one, I'm gonna run through these four steps. Number one says automatically add two inches per panel regardless of width. Number two, Add another inch per panel for each edge that will snap to some surface. I can see that here I'm going to be snapping to an edge there. So I'm going to add one for number two. Number three, subtract one inch for each edge connecting to a stucco strip. Now I'm not connecting to a stucco strip with this panel. So I'm going to subtract zero there. And number four, for tracking attachment, add another one inch per 10 foot of panel width for relaxed fit. I don't quite have 10 feet here. So I'm gonna add zero there. So my final width on P1 is 75 inches. Moving on to panel two, you can see that I start again with 72 inches. Automatically add two inches. Add another inch per panel for each edge that will snap to some surface. Subtract one inch for each edge connecting to a stucco strip. Again, I'm not connecting to a stucco strip here, so I subtract zero. And for number four, for tracking attachment, add another inch per 10 foot of panel width for relaxed fit. This panel is actually gonna put me over 10 foot for that opening. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and add another inch here for the relaxed fit that we're shooting for. So my final width on P2 is 76 inches. Finally, panel three starts with 144 inches. Add two inches per panel. Add another inch for each edge that will snap to a surface. So I add one there. Subtract one inch for each edge connecting to a stucco strip and ignore the width of the strip itself. Now I am gonna be attaching to a stucco strip here with a magnetic connection. So I'm going to subtract one for number three. And finally, for tracking attachment, add another inch per 10 foot of panel width for that relaxed fit. I do have over 10 feet on this panel, so I'm gonna go ahead and add an inch there. So my final panel width on panel three is 147 inches. All right, so this is my final panel order. What we come out with is six panels that we've done the final panel adjustments on, plus our two stucco strips, which we like to treat as many panels. So these will be the eight panels for my eight panel configuration. All right, we've made it through step one and we're on to step two, tracking. In this section, we're gonna answer the question, what tracking hardware do I need? All right, so let's run through some of the ground rules on tracking. Every piece of eight foot track has a factory cut on each end. You only want to splice our factory cuts whenever you're putting two pieces of track together. So whenever you make a cut, any edge that's cut by you is actually going to end up receiving an end cap. So if you look at that logically, that means that only one track per entire side should be cut by you. All right, so let's take a look at how we're going to drop our track into this particular application. So in this application, I'm going to be using an outside hang. So I don't actually need to use the curved track in this scenario. So I'm just going to be showing straight track and splices and end caps. The first thing I like to do is go ahead and drop in my pieces of eight foot straight track that I'm going to need on each side. You can see I'm going to need one piece of eight foot straight track on each side. From there, I like to start dropping additional pieces of straight track in. So you can see when I drop this one in, 
I noticed that I need 48 inches of that straight track to complete that side, but that leaves me with a 48 inch remnant. Now, looking at my other side, I know I need 48 inches down there as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that 48 inch remnant to complete that side. Doing the exact same thing on the bottom, you can see that I can split that piece of track into two pieces, 48 inches and 48 inches. And the remnant from that piece of track is gonna complete that side. So in this particular application, I'm just gonna need six pieces of eight foot track to complete all four sides of my rectangular application. Now let's talk about splices and end caps. All track connections are gonna need splices and end caps keep the carriers from falling out of the tracking. So every end of a piece of track that's exposed is gonna need an end cap. So looking at my particular project, you can see that each side is going to need a splice to connect those two pieces of track. So I need four splices. And then each side is gonna need two end caps to keep the carriers from falling out. So I end up needing four splices and eight end caps in this particular application. So we are done with track. So whenever I get to the order page on the website where I'm ordering tracking, this is exactly what I'm gonna order to complete my project. All right, so we've made it through step one and step two, and we're on to our final step, attachments. In this section, we're gonna answer the question, what attachments do I need? All right, so let's talk about our panel connections. You can see in this scenario that I've got eight panel to surface connections, and that's basically where I'm gonna be snapping one of my panels to those regular corner columns. From there, I've got four magnetic connections. This magnetic connection is connecting these two panels, and then I'm gonna have magnetic connections at my stucco strips as well. So if you count them up, I've got one, two, three, four magnetic connections that I need to buy attachments for. All right, so let's talk about marine snaps. Five snaps placed vertically on these regular corner columns is a good number to use. I'll also likely use extra snaps to seal the base of my curtain, so I'm gonna order a few extra. But from there, I wanna remind you that the $130 snap tool is fully refundable. So knowing that I'm gonna be doing a lot of marine snaps in this application, I'm definitely gonna order that industrial snap tool because it's gonna make my life a tremendous amount easier when putting up my curtains. And then whenever I'm finished, I can just ship that back to Mosquito Curtains and get a full refund. All right, so looking at my particular application, I've got eight connections where I'm gonna be putting marine snaps up the sides of these columns times five snaps each equals 40 total snaps. And then I'm gonna throw in an extra 10 for sealing the base. So whenever I place my order, I'm gonna order 50 snaps. All right, so let's talk about magnets and fiberglass rods. Five magnet pairs, which is 10 total magnets, is generally a good number to use for applications under eight feet tall. You wanna space your magnets 12 to 24 inches apart, and each magnetic connection is gonna require two fiberglass rods. So in my particular application, I've got four magnetic connections times 10 magnets for each connection is gonna give me 40 total magnets. And then I've got four magnetic connections times two fiberglass rods per magnetic connection is gonna give me eight total rods that I need for this particular application. Each corner of an inside hang application requires an elastic cord, but outside hangs don't actually require elastic cord as the structure itself provides something for the curtain to attach to or to go around. So in this particular application, being an outside hang, I've got zero free standing corners. So I've got zero elastic cords I'm gonna to need to order for my project. All right, so this is our final attachments order. One thing that I like to mention when talking about attachments is order plenty. In fact, whenever I complete a project, I like to order extra because if you order too many snaps or too many magnets, you can always return them with the industrial snap tool and we will happily add whatever you send us back to your $130 refund. All right, so we are done with this project and we are ready to go to the order page at mosquitocurtains.com and place our final order. So you can see here, this is our final order. We'll go and we'll order our panels, we'll order our tracking hardware, and finally, we'll order our attachments. Thank you so much for watching this session of planning your project. You should have all the tools you need now to go order your own materials for your freestanding rectangle with a tracking attachment. Thanks again and have a great day.